Hello, pen people. Back again. We're going to talk today about titanium pens. And they are in a class of pens that I like to call machined pens. And I have a few that are made out of titanium. And I will talk about them, uh, uh, about the modifications I do to them and how well I like them and that sort of thing. Um, and let's start off by talking about titanium pens from China. Um, they are not the best as far as I'm concerned, but they aren't terrible. Um, we have a few here, and let me start with, well, a ballpoint. Um, so I'm not really uh, a huge into ballpoints at any time, but I know uh, I would be ridiculous if I were to uh, deny the fact that they are useful and that they, at times they are far um, more durable uh, than a fountain pen. So I have one, and this is a Tucson is the name of the company. It's T-W-O-S-U-N. Um, and it's a beautifully machined piece of titanium that then was um, electro uh, anodized uh, into this interesting kind of a leopardy pattern. It is a bolt action pen, and as far as I can tell, pretty much everything on the pen is made out of titanium. Um, the the bolt lever here is very strong. You can hear it snapping. It's a little bit smoother now that I've used it a few times. Um, and as you can see down here, it retracts quite easily. Um, you'll notice that the nozzle here at the end is a bit shinier and smoother than the rest of the pen. And the reason for that is, is when this came from China, um, this nozzle, the hole here was too small to fit a full-sized um, better quality refill. It had some generic Chinese refill in it and um, it was smaller. So inside you have a spring and um, this is a Fisher Space Pen refill, uh, which I like. They're reliable um, and, and they're as smooth as these kind of standard ballpoints can be. But um, as you can see, it fits in the nozzle. But that's only because I had to drill that out. And that was that was quite the task. This titanium is really durable, and it does not like being drilled. And so uh, in the process, I kind of polished the end of the nozzle and removed a bunch of the anodization. Now, of course, that doesn't harm the metal, really. Um, titanium is a very durable material, um, whether anodized or not. Um, the anodization is kind of fun, though. You can get some interesting colors, and to the point... We have um, a few here. Let me start off with the first one I got. So um, this is kind of a no-name no pen. Um, I believe it's um, under the company name EDC Gear. Um, and this one's a little different than uh, most of the other pens here because this one was made out of tubes of titanium. And then the ends were milled out of uh, bar stock. And so it is very, very light. And it has a titanium section, and the nib unit is an interesting nib unit. It is actually, uh, it uses Parker nib units, kind of like the uh, Parker Sonnet, and then uh, Parker Reef, uh, Parker converters as well. And one of the interesting things about this pen is that the interior portions of this pen, you can see the, the Parker uh, feed sticking through there, but the rest of that is all machined titanium which is quite interesting um, and makes it for a very durable pen and it writes quite well. And as you can see, the outside is highly polished. It did not come quite that polished. That's something I did. Um, I removed the finial by unscrewing it and I can, you know, it unscrews. You can see that there, it's coming off. Um, and it's got a little notch for where the clip goes through. So let me put that back together before I take it apart again. Um, and I removed that, and then I used a torch to heat it up and turn it this interesting purpley blue color. I really like it. And then I did it to the end here, and it's kind of a fade. So what I did is I hit this with the torch and let it kind of fade up the barrel. Um, I could have left it all shiny silver, but because titanium has this ability to be fire blued, um, I decided to take advantage of that, and I kind of like the effect. The next pen um, I got was this one, which was also... Um, another Chinese titanium pen, and I have a suspicion that some parts of this pen are not titanium but are rather stainless steel. Um, I, I suspect that the clip is stainless steel, uh, most of the hardware such as the screws and things, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, none of it sticks to a magnet except for the hardened tip here, and this is one of those goofy things they call a tactical pen. Um, somehow it's supposed to help you 
in tactical situations, which is really pretty ridiculous. Uh, but I wanted to see what it looked like, particularly because it has this cap that looks a bit like a Keras Custom ink. I mean, the scale is quite a bit different, but they obviously were copying the design, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, anyway, but it is a titanium pen, and there is somewhere uh, in my box of pen parts a replacement uh, section here that allows you to use a rollerball, um, which, you know, if I lose it, I don't care because I don't I'm not a big fan of roller balls anyway. Um, but it is, you know, most of the pen is titanium. It's also quite light, um, and it works well enough. Um, I don't know if I... It's got O-rings um, every place that it fits together. Um, it's got an empty cartridge in it right now. I don't know why, but that it will take a full-size converter. Oh, I remember. The converter that came with this was junk, and it fell apart. Anyway, um... So that's another titanium pen. I think that this one was in the $40 range. This one was in the $50 range. Um, this one, too, was in that range in there. It's just because titanium is an expensive material. And here's one that I paid a bit more for. I think I paid $55, maybe, for this one, or $60. Um, this is uh, another interesting Chinese pen. Um, it came originally as shiny silver as this portion of this pen, but I couldn't leave well enough alone because I like to fire blue these things. And this one I did a little differently. I took it apart and I fire blued it on my gas range, just on my stovetop. Um, but of course, I dismantled it and removed the, the spring steel clip. This uh, nut right here or screw um, that holds together the uh, capping mechanism um, is also made out of titanium, but the internal portion in here is actually made out of brass. And if you hear it, if you listen when you pull this apart, you hear that ting sound? That is uh, actually the metal tines. Of, there's actually a, a kind of a five-finger gripping unit in there that's uh, made out of brass that is, uh, is what grabs the pen here and holds it quite securely. But one of the weird things about this pen is that the cap is heavier than the entire barrel and nib unit. Um, because of the brass, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but the, it's one of the advantages of titanium is you have a very robust, strong material that is not as heavy as others. And just to give us a little idea, let me throw this on here. Um, and for a comparison, let's see, I have a... So, uh, the Laumi Safaris are quite light. You can see there it's about 16 and three quarters of a gram, and uh, which is rather light. Um, and this one, I, I don't think it's got a converter in it or anything. It's just, oh, it does. So with a converter and the whole pen together, 16 and a quarter grams. Uh, sorry, three quarters. Uh, a Lamy All-Star is 21.7. Now this thing's considerably heavier because this was actually machined out of bar stock titanium and it's much much stronger than those pens are um, and therefore it's heavier and we're looking at 50.6 I'm sorry almost 50 49.6 grams but the interesting thing about that is the cap alone is 26 almost 26 and a half grams whereas the pen that you hold and write with is 23.5 so this portion is quite light and easy to use and write with. Um, and you'll note there that it's got a nib marked Lamy, and that's because that is actually a Lamy nib that I put on there because the one that came with it was garbage. And it is inked up. It writes nicely, as you would expect from a Lamy, um, even though this pen was made in China. And I don't generally uh, go for knockoffs. I just thought this was an interesting kind of tactical version of a Safari. Um, and the Safari is just so light. I mean, this whole pen is lighter than just this half of the pen. Anyway, so those are the Chinese titanium pens I have. Oh, and I forgot to mention that for this pen, it also came with a rollerball conversion unit. Oh, if I can get it out there. Um, so this will hold um, a standard kind of a G2 style rollerball um, refill, and then that will just screw in where the the nib um, the section does onto that pen. 
Uh, again, I don't use it because I'm not a big rollerball fan, but um, it's just kind of interesting that it included that. All right, moving on. Um, there are a bunch of American companies that are also making pens out of titanium. Uh, one of the ones that I like in particular is uh, Enso. E well, may is Enso American or is it? Uh, you know, I really don't know. Maybe they're from Italy. Um, it sure sounds like they are. Um, but this is the Enso Italia. Um, and it's a, it's a, I mean, look how beautiful that thing is. Isn't that beautiful? I like the conical ends on it. Beautiful machining on this titanium. This pen, let me zero this out. There we go. This whole pen, inked up and everything, weighs in at 44.9, or about 45 grams. The cap is just one piece of titanium with a screw and a stainless steel clip. And you're at 15.4 grams. And then the pen, the part that you'd be holding on to, is about 29 grams, which means it's a fairly light pen. I mean, really, it feels light in the hand. You'd hardly notice that this was a solid piece of titanium, but it is. Now, you can see that the section here is blue, and that's because, again, I fire blued this one. I put it on the end of a, a rod in my drill and let it, let it turn slowly while I heated it up with a torch until it got this beautiful blue color. And it is quite durable. Um, when you fire blue titanium, it makes for a very hard surface, and this lasts for a good long time. And um, standard international converter, and you can see I've got a piece of rubber band on, uh, rubber band on here. And the reason for that is, is when it's inside the pen, the converter kind of tends to rattle inside of it, and it was a little irritating to me, and I'll show you. Well... It just sounds a little bit cheap just because the end of that converter is tapping on the inside of the barrel. Um, and when I first got this pen, the threads were very, very rough. And it was very hard to get it to screw down. And you can see I can still easily cross-thread it like that, and it binds up. But most of the time it just screws together because I've polished the threads inside and out to make it easier. Um, I've considered fire bluing the entire outside of the pen, um, but... Uh, I don't know, it's just so pretty. I, I have a hard time making that leap yet. Um, and as you can see, it, it uses Bach uh, nib units, and this is a Bach um, titanium. I figured titanium, titanium, might as well stick together there. Um, and there is another Enso pen that I have, which is really, really tiny. Machined out of titanium also, and again, I fire blued the whole thing because I just like doing that. And look how pretty that purpley blue color is in those facets. Um, one of the things that Enso does that is kind of nice, and I'll go back to the, the Italia here, is you won't see any branding on this pen anywhere unless you unscrew it here. And there is a tiny, I don't, you probably won't even be able to see this. Oh, there it is. Enso, right there, their brand name is on the inside of the grip section. Um... Very, very subtle. It's, uh, I think that's interesting. Um, a lot of pens you have it, you know, the, the name splashed all over the pen somehow, but not with these Ensos. This one, it's very, very tiny, and it's at the bottom of the barrel there. This one is held together by O-rings, or rather the cap closes by O-rings. You hear that pop? And um, it has a tiny little number five nib. It will fit a full-size converter, not a converter, but a, a sorry, <laughs> full-size. It holds an international short uh, cartridge in there, and um, it's a good writer, and it just snaps together like this on that O-ring, and you can write with it, and it becomes a full-size pen, uh, which is quite nice. And then, you hear that? That's kind of cool. Um, that is another delightful little titanium pen. Um, a couple more. Um, so this is... The Namisu Nova, and it is a beautiful con. It's you know a beautiful shaped pen, cigar like, but with cone tops. In fact, it's very similar in size and shape to the Enso Italia, very very similar. And um, as you can see, it was uh, it, it's got a different finish to it. It's not as shiny as this one. This is actually a machine finish. Um, they left it um, with just the machine finish, so it's not been polished. But this is machined, and, but very very beautifully machined, as you can see. This one instead was uh, uh, tumbled, and so it's got a rougher finish, like a stone washed finish. And I fire blued the ends of it, and so the color is there. It's it's a nice blue to fading to purple to, to gold. 
Um, but it's much more muted because of the fact that it was tumbled. And I also did that to the section. And it also has a titanium Bach nib, and that's another great writing pen. This one, too, as you can see, has a I put a rubber o-ring on here because this one really rattled inside the pen. Um, so you can see all those threads there. One of the really brilliant things about this Namisu pen, besides the fact that it's light and it's a beautiful, wonderful, wet writing pen, is that it's got these very blocky Acme threads. And you can see there's only one or two there so that it caps. Um, it's hard to show this. But it's about three quarters of a turn, and about three quarters of a turn to come off. Maybe a half a turn. Yeah, it's more like a half a turn, and I love that. It very rarely has come unscrewed on me. Um, it can at times, which is unfortunate, but um, I've not really had that many issues with it. Um, I love how it writes, and let's see how much it weighs. So about 49 and a quarter grams, and let's compare that to the Enso. So isn't that interesting? The Enso is lighter, but they're both solid titanium pens. How is that? I mean, in the hand, the Enso feels heavier. Man, that just throws me. But they are both machined out of solid bar stock titanium. The cap feels a bit heavier on this one. So it's almost 14 grams. This, the cap is heavier on the Enso. The overall body on this one is 35.3. So it, it, this is lighter. They must have machined more out of it and made the walls a bit thinner on the barrel. A lot of threads on that. Yeah, and that's where it is. This barrel is much heavier and chunkier, um, which I, I really have no complaints because being titanium, it's not that heavy. You know, in talking about weight um, and machine pens, it's hard to talk about them without considering one of the, the, the biggest monsteriest of them out there, um, which would be, uh, let's see, where is it at? Where are you hiding? Here it is. This is a Keras Customs ink in solid bronze. And even though the clip is titanium, this pen is very heavy. And there you are, almost 100 grams. This thing is a brute. Um, the cap alone... 35 grams, that's heavier than a lot of pens out there all by itself. And then the part that you hold on to, almost 64 grams. I mean, it's just, it's heavy, it's a bit uh, tough to hold on to, and that's the advantage of titanium. And I really wish that Keras would start machining titanium um, just because for a pen that's roughly the same size, that weighs half what it does, and yet it's still solid titanium. And you'd be hard-pressed to say which one is a tougher pen, but this one weighs twice what this one does. Um, so if you're into the, the aesthetic of solid titanium or solid brass or bronze or copper or whatever out there, titanium really is the way to go if you don't want to be holding something that weighs a ton. Um, I do want to touch on my last titanium pen which is my the latest acquisition. This is a tactile turn. Um, they're a bolt-action pen, and it uses a Pilot G2. And when it came to me this morning, um, it was all silver. And the, and the nozzle here wasn't blue, and the top wasn't blue, and the little operad wasn't blue either. Um, again, I couldn't uh, restrain myself, and I took the torch to them. Um, one of the, you have to be really careful about that, of course. If there's any sort of a, a grease or a, an O-ring or anything like that, you want to take those off and clean it properly before you do anything because you don't want to start a fire and all that other stuff. But the beautiful thing about titanium is that the heat doesn't hurt it at all. It, you heat it up and it turns cherry red. It doesn't make it softer. It doesn't really do anything to it. And, and once it cools off, it's just like it was before, which is really awesome. Whereas with other metals like steel and stuff, it can warp it badly. Um, but the, it takes this brilliant color. Now, when this came to me first, you could not see this seam between the barrel and the nozzle at all. It's so wonderfully machined that there is just no sign of that transition at all. But, of course, since I've taken it off and blued it, there is. Um, and this was kind of fun to take this apart and put that nice dark purpley color right there on that, that operating system. And it works quite well. You get used to it, the snap uh, action of it. So I have a one rollerball. And I have 
one ball point, and that's it. Um, and they're both titanium. So if you're going to get one, you know, if you have to have one of these things, I suppose, have a good one. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this pen with the refill and everything in it is about 34 grams, which to me is a perfect weight for a pen. You can feel it. It's there, um, but it's not heavy at all. And I could write with this thing all day long. Now, I did have another pen similar to this made by Kara's Customs. And um, let's see, where is it at? Oh, here it is. This is the Keras Customs Bolt pen, and it is all titanium, uh, sorry, not titanium, aluminum, except for the stainless steel clip here and these couple of screws. It, too, uses a G2 refill, so these are you know, basically straight across competitor pens. They're both bolt action. You know, one is this titanium um, with this nice kind of tactile surface on it. Sounds like corduroys there. Whereas Kara's left theirs very, very smooth anodized aluminum. Um, the bolt action works a little differently. You have to operate it by pushing down and turning with your thumb on the end here, which is also quite smooth. It, I have no complaints with how this pen works. The only thing about this pen is because it's smooth, polished, and then anodized, is it is a bear to hold on to. It, you have to grip so hard that within a few words you're cramping because it, it will just slide between your fingers. See, I'm pressing as hard as I can with my, my grip fingers here, and I'm just able to push it right out of my hand, it, it, which is tragic because it's a pretty pen, but they are just I, – I hate it. I really do. I hate it because it just you can't hold on to it. So that's why I shoved this um, – this rubber gripper on it, and um, then I gave it away. Um, you can hold on to it with the gripper, but you take that thing off, you won't be able to hold on to it, and it becomes a miserable pen. So this is a far better pen as far as I'm concerned. And they're in the same price range, which doesn't make sense to me, but that's you know how things are. Solid titanium pen, aluminum pen. This one has a nice, beautiful surface on it. It holds – you can hold on to this one quite well. I mean I hold on to this one with these fingers, and I can't push it out of my – I mean, just I, I can hold on to it, which is awesome. Um, anyway, those are titanium pens, and um, I know that we will talk a bit more about specific pens later on. Um, I have to do the review on the Keras Customs Ink um, because I've got the two of them now, and I can show you the differences and how they write and everything. Um, and for those of you who might have been interested and have seen my previous vi videos, let me show you. I mentioned my Daytone inks and that I put them into glass bottles. Well, here they are. Um, they're in these dropper, eyedropper uh, glass bottles, which makes them a lot easier and kind of fun to play with. Um, if you remember correctly, um, it actually comes with 15 inks. You can see there are 12 here. I have the other three in different bottles. Um, I gave actually gave one of them away, which is why this is actually a Robert Ulster ink. I hated the plastic bottle it came in, so I put it in one of these eyedroppers as well. Um, but anyway, this is a great way to de decant those Dayton inks if you uh, happen to purchase that 15 ink set. Um, I was able to get these out off of Amazon. They come in three separate colors. They come in a brown bottle, a green bottle, and a blue bottle. Um, three of each, and uh, or rather four of each. And oh, actually, I think. Well, are there? Oh, hmm. there are clear ones too. <laughs> so there's three clear, three brown, three green, and three blue. And it was fairly inexpensive to get those. Um, so anyway, if you're into machined pens. Uh, titanium, as far as I'm concerned, is a great way to go. Um, I do have a few brass pens out there as well and a couple of copper ones, but um, for all-day writers, something you can use all the time and write all day long with them, you can't beat the titanium ones. Yes, I do have some heavier uh, brass 